do you think I think we're like showbiz ish? <laughs> right. Because I don't think we're very good at all of that <laughs> stuff. We're not good at the. <laughs> we're showbiz ish because we're not very good. No, no, no. We're good at the performing. <laughs> yeah. We're not good at all the other stuff. We're not good at the whole. Oh, darling. Oh. We're not. We're not the loveliest of companies. No. No, we just tell it how it is. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hi, Andy. How are you? I'm, I'm very well. You, you did that with the inflection of someone uh, who just saw me passing in the streets rather than two people who've sat down together in a podcast recording studio. <laughs> well, I like to have the energy of freshness. <laughs> you you always, you smell and sound fresh at all times. Thank you very much. It's very good to hear because I have been travelling around a lot. So yeah. it's easy for me to not smell fresh. Well, let me let me let me officially <laughs> on the show stuff a podcast rest your mind at ease on that front. Well, that's great. Um, I can't smell you from here, so that means you must smell all right too. You right? missed the opportunity re- to return the compliment. Oh, <laughs> this is showbiz, Pippa. You you meant to you meant to give me a gift straight back. Always know. Welcome to the show stuff a podcast. Come along with us uh, because we've got a great episode for you. Yeah, it's our monthly dive into the world of musicals and improvisations where we get a, a guest on and have a chat and. Make them sing a song with us. Um, I am really excited about this guest. If you're wondering who we're talking about, it's <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> then, let, then let us tell you his name. <laughs> <laughs> it's Kyle Smith Bino. Who's he? Some of you are thinking. Well, you should know because he's in Ghosts. He's absolutely in Ghosts. And there is a bit of a showstopper Ghosts fan crossover we've noticed on Twitter. Yes, that's true. That's true. So we're hoping that you're going, well, hey, it's Kyle. And um, he plays the husband, the only character who can't see the ghosts. Yeah. Um, so we do touch on that, the sadness of, of having to always play that you can't see someone or any of the fun that's happening. What you might also not know is that he's also an amazing improviser. Yeah. And um, he's been in many an improv group. In fact, that's when I, I first sort of met him was in Improv Land. And so, yeah. but recently he's been doing lots of comedy acting uh, on the screen, also in Stats Flats, which I can never say because it's Stath really. Stats Let's Flats. Stats Let's. It's not good for my charming idiosyncrasy of my mouth. <laughs> of the charming idiosyncrasy of the Previn's <laughs> mouth. It's, it's not good for lift, <laughs> is what we're saying. Um, so, yeah, so he's, bri- he's really brilliant. It was wonderful to have him. Uh, we had Duncan Walsh Atkins on the keys. We sure did. And we recorded this at Tall Story Studio in North London. We should have a listen. Let's. It's Kyle Smith Mino. Thank you for coming and joining us Thanks today. Thanks for having me. Um, it's a joy to have you. It might be. Uh, well, we don't well, know might, yet. Yeah, you don't know yet. Well, I mean, that's very much an improv thing, is that you don't know until the end Yes. Uh, what the content Sometimes is. Sometimes in the middle. Sometimes in the middle you could start to judge it, but you try not to judge it till the end, because in the middle you could judge it as not great content, and then that starts to make it be not great content. Or you could think, this is going really well, I can relax. Yes, and then it becomes not great content. Yeah. And then I edit you into oblivion. <laughs> oh. I don't want that. Fair Can enough. I just say now that I don't want that? Okay, yeah, this no problem. This will be completely unedited. <laughs> <laughs> We've also got Joshua Jackson in the room. Oh, Joshua Jackson, Thanks, Hi. guys. Appreciate so, it. Um, sorry, I'm not mentioning you. working with you for a lot of years now, and uh, <laughs> so seems like The showstopper afterthought, as we call him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a fun name. It is. <laughs> you got a middle name? My real middle name? It's yeah. Actually, it's Sin Q. C-I-N-Q-U-E. Which is my 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 stage name is Joshua C Jackson. Oh um, right, because there's another Joshua Jackson out there. Who we don't talk about him. No, uh, we have to. Talk we about absolutely have to talk <laughs> about the other to. Joshua Jackson because it's one of the funniest things. Yes. Uh, yes. Yesterday we were back at the Lyric doing Showstopper in the West End, and uh, every time Joshua appears, what appears uh, in uh, at the stage door? So Joshua, I, I hear a call over the tannoy saying, uh, "Joshua Jackson, can you please report to the stage door?" I'm thinking to myself, "What have I done? What have I done? I'm just in a dressing room trying to get ready for the show, and." Uh, uh, immediately after that, I had the afterthought, hence the afterthought, Joshua, that uh, this is another piece of fan mail for the Joshua Jackson, the Canadian Joshua Jackson. And so I consistently get Star of a 90s heartthrob drama, Dawson's, Dawson's Creek. Dawson's Creek. Oh, yeah. yes. See, I like that you had to think about it. <laughs> you're... you're- 
when someone says Joshua Jackson, I think of you first. My guy. My guy. <laughs> and that's why we have you here today. Um, <laughs> oh, right. Okay. So, and we should say this is not just an isolated incident. Joshua C. Jackson gets stacks upon stacks and stacks of well meaning fan mail uh, for a completely different person. And what do you do with it? Oh. I, I absolutely do not send it on to the Joshua Jackson. <laughs> so I'm trying to. You gotta burn that baby. Hundred percent. Deplete yeah. his fan base. Yeah. So he's got a bunch of angry fans. Yeah, yeah. There. Why aren't you getting back to me? Yeah, okay. exactly. yeah, yeah. Great. Right. Good. No, good. <laughs> but I just love that all of these people just think that the the Joshua C. Jackson from Dawson's Creek might be doing a once a month improv musical at the Lyric Theatre and just send him fan mail there just in case. Is it once a month? I thought that was on every day. Well, we did uh, we did a full run right. and then that stopped and so now we do it once a week, mm -hmm. once a month. But if you'd like to send us some money to Showstopper Productions to mount another run, we'd very much appreciate it. Yes, <laughs> you know we tour around, tour around the old uh, country. We used to tour around the world until the thing happened. Right, yeah. the thing that shall not be named. When they got rid of Milk Rose, Milky Rose. Milky Rose, yeah. When they got rid of Milky Rose, yeah. it was a sad time. <laughs> Milky Way stars as well, they got rid of. Did they? Yeah, they don't exist either. Really? Yes. Magic stars? Yeah, magic stars, you, you find me a packet, I'll give you a fiver. That's two things I found out in one day. Oh, wow, that's a lot <laughs> of stuff. I'm also thinking I can definitely track down some Milky Way stars for less than a fiver somehow. There's definitely a racket in here. How many packets will you buy at a fiver each, Pippa? Oh, man. I just want one for proof. Oh, okay. <laughs> because I don't think I actually quite like them. Really? <laughs> you know, like I said, I'll eat them, but I'm not. I'm not. Okay, yeah. I'm not excited enough. about them. I don't even like chocolate that much, but I love those little guys. Do you? Yeah, man. What's the what is it? The the high milk content? <laughs> yeah, probably. I think so. Just a big fan of calcium. <laughs> yeah, maybe I just like milk. <laughs> um, should try milk. Should I just drink milk? <laughs> I'm not trying milk, mate. What about chocolate milk? No, worse. Worse than milk? Yes. <laughs> chocolate milk is worse <laughs> than milk. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> I would say way, way better, but... No, not no. for me. Okay. Nah. Vanilla ice cream mm -hmm. with milk. What? With, with what? Yeah, like so... A I, milkshake? <laughs> this is what I used to drink when I was younger. All right. When my mum went out. <laughs> I'd just like fill up a cup with three scoops of ice cream and pour milk in it. Whisk oh. it about. Whip it. Yeah. yeah. And then have that. that. Isn't that just a milkshake? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> How lumpy was the ice cream? Uh, I mean, I didn't whisk it very well. It was like a, I was, it wasn't like industrial level. <laughs> <laughs> I did it with my hand. <laughs> Your hand? Yeah. No, with like a, a spoon. Okay, okay. My hand on a spoon. <laughs> I was really imagining A spoon you attached to my hand. hand. <laughs> did you feel better because you put in the work to whip it yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like, I'm earning this. <laughs> Burn it off before I drink it. 100%, it's like celery, really. Yeah. Basically the same. <laughs> Yeah. So Kyle, Hello. you're on the telly. Yeah. You know, so just in case people listening are like, but who is Kyle? Sure. Be like, oh, he's that guy from Ghosts, mm. which is one of my favorite television programs mm -hmm. in the world. Thanks. It's very funny. Did you know it was going to be as funny when you signed up for it? I knew it was going to be funny. Um, I didn't know how big it was going to be. Mm, it's mm. huge. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's some people's favorite show. Yeah. yeah. And um, a lot of people... Uh, live their life uh, in and around quotes and things that happen in Ghosts. There's yeah. a lot, there's a big fan base. They really love it. What yeah. uh, do you get quoted at? People will tweet me like pictures of me and someone else in the cast. Like maybe if we have got like a behind the scenes picture and we're talking and like, before you can see them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that happens the most. And how is it filming not being able to see such funny people? It's uh, it's difficult, and I always forget at the beginning of every series. <laughs> <laughs> the first like day, I'll just be having a look at them, or just talking to like in the scene. I'll mm. just look at whoever's talking and be like, "Oh yeah, I can't do that," mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, because it's like. There's like a nine month period between series. Do you ever get lonely because you are the only character who can't talk to everybody? Yeah. There's a lot of, you'll notice, especially in series four that's coming out soon. Soon, maybe? After, after this, before this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Just edit whichever one it's you been want. Out. No, it's not unedited. It's been out for ages. <laughs> um, there are quite a few 
uh, episodes where it's sort of like Mike doing stuff around the house. Yeah, I did see that in season four. Yeah, and then there's like, that's got, <laughs> and then that's got to be just me. So mm-hmm. there'll be like a day or two in the schedule where it's just me in. So it does get lonely. Thank yeah, you well. for asking. Yeah, I bet. I, I, I was thinking it must be uh, quite... Quite, I, I was. It's such a great part mm. and a really important part to have the guy who can't see but knows that his wife is talking to the yeah. ghost. But must just. I would personally be like, oh, but I want to play with. <laughs> I want to yeah. play with Simon Farnaby. Yeah, I would actually. I mean, in series three, actually, I got to do a lot of stuff with him. I got to. I spent his wedding anniversary with him. Did you? Yeah. So on on his wedding anniversary, we were filming together, and we were the only two in. And it was the scene where where Mike has the drone, and he's yes. filming the yes. outside of the yeah yeah outside yeah, yeah. and um, yeah that was and that was me and him, um, and he's sort of helping me with a video that the promo video for mm-hmm. the house. So he was pantsless with you, yeah, on his, on his wedding, wedding anniversary. anniversary. <laughs> yeah, you think that's how he would have wanted to spend? If not, he's a fool. <laughs> <laughs> And how much are you allowed to improvise in it? Because obviously you started or did do a lot of improvisation Yeah, as yeah. Well. Quite a lot, actually. Uh, the, the mic that they had in mind and the mic that I brought were, were were quite different. Okay. Not so different that they were like, this will never work, obviously, because they were sort of thought, <laughs> yeah, this, <laughs> this does work. And I think that as the years have gone on, they've, they've perfected um, my version. Mm-hmm. It takes very little changing of the voice mm. um, in the writing. It's, it's sort of like written, as I would say, quite a lot of things. Then I just, I, I use that to like add some more bits, really. Mm. Whereas before, sort of series one, it was like changing the way that he would say a thing because I was like, I'd never say um, cool beans, for example. <laughs> 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 Um, so, so how, I'd never how, say that. <laughs> I want that on record. I would never say it. They could be the coldest beans of all time. <laughs> yeah. Will not refer never to them. them. Um, <laughs> can, can you say more? Yeah. How, how was the character on the page different to what you've made it? Well, I think they were going for someone slightly, may I say, geekier. Mm-hmm. I think that's how it was written. It was just like, and I remember in the breakdown, um, when I got the, the email about the audition, he was an app developer. Mm. Ah. Ah. Um, and that's never at any point come come out in the show. But I think that was like when they when they were like, "What are their jobs?" Um, it was that, and not to say all app developers are geeky, but I think that that was what they that's the sort of route they were going down when they were like, "What's that, this character like?" That sort of brain that they were that sort yeah. of brain thinking with that kind of yeah thing. yeah yeah. And I think that I because I don't know how to do that. Um, <laughs> no, I do. I definitely do. But um, but I just brought a different kind of energy to it, and I think they were like, "Oh, all right, let's let's go with that." Did you say you do know how to app develop? No, I know how to be a geek. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you? What do you? What do you geek out on? Bob's Burgers. Yes, love <laughs> me some Bob's Burgers. Yeah. I was thinking recently that I have no hobbies. Mm. Not recently. <laughs> I've been thinking this for ages. Um, about a year. Someone asked me maybe a year ago. A year ago today, someone asked me <laughs> what my hobbies were. And I was like, I've got nothing. Mm. None. But, like it's cause it's, but it's so hard to have a hobby, I think, when you're a performer, because essentially your hobby has become your, your yeah, job, right? Because improv yeah. would have been your hobby, maybe, or not? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. But I'd like one. Yeah, but what kind of, would you like something like completely different? Do you know what? I was actually, <laughs> I, I said the other day, I want to get into F1. Oh, I don't know anything about it. That's an it. expensive hobby. You mean yeah. as a racer or yes, as, as a spectator? I want to build cars. Um, no, just like as a spectator. Just I just want to know what, what, what's going on. What it is and what's happening. Yeah. But that's like, quite easy. Is. You just have to watch it. I don't think it is that easy. Why? why? Because you've got to like know who's who and what's going on and why. Yeah, there's, a, there's a test before I mean, they let you subscribe to the right? channel. Yeah. yeah. You've got to know the history. My a husband's bit. obsessed with F1. So Did he... Did, but has he always or did yeah, he just like one day it was just since he was a kid right so see yeah so he's got well, he no, must but, have like but, got, he, but at some point he just started watching it and then he learned the names of all the drivers and so and then yeah. i and as as his 
person who sits next to him going, You can oh, say yes. wife. You can say wife. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's his wife. That's his wife. I sit next to him enjoying the, the lovely F1. But you just pick stuff up, don't you? But I see, I see where you're coming from because I imagine don't. you are you <laughs> as your age coming up against him as a kid who's got all this knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how do I call myself and then a he, real fan? Okay. And he probably he didn't goes, just like turn, up, turn on the TV and it was on and he was like, I watch this now. It might have been like on in the background. Yes. And then it'd be like, oh, what's this thing that everyone keeps watching? Oh, oh circles. Just, you know? Oh, yeah, it's deep, it's deep yeah. in that. His dad used to work for Mercedes Benz as the. Uh, um, well, now it all comes out. Comes out. <laughs> as the PR guy. So he used to go and be in the. He used to go and like stand in the back of the tents with all the VIPs. So not normal at all. Not I normal. Can't, I can't normal way with this completely sport undermined your entire argument. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I was arguing for myself. Right. Sure. Well, I'll but just go were... and stand in the back of the tent, and then I'll know about everything. But you could probably get in a VIP tent now because you're on the telly. Do you think so? Yeah, I think so. It's... Just, just get invited. It's mad. Yeah, but even if I did that, I wouldn't know what was going on. <laughs> if I got invited right now to a Formula One match, match. <laughs> <laughs> then I'd be like, who's he? What's happening? Where, what does that mean? Whereas, like, someone told me there's a documentary to watch. All oh, right. Which one? The one on Senna? That's a good one. I don't know. Start yeah, with right. that one. Very good one. Someone, Very good. Someone gave me the name. I can't remember what it's called. It's on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm like, and I was like, yeah, I'll watch that. And then haven't. Mm. Mm. I don't know if you. I feel like there's not a huge dedication from you to starting this hobby. I think maybe the idea of it is uh, more <laughs> interesting to me than doing it. Than Speaking the of process. hobbies, you, you were on the uh, the sewing bee, weren't you? Have you not considered taking up <laughs> sewing as a hobby? No, that has nothing to do with a hobby for me because I would never. <laughs> what was I doing on that show? <laughs> hey, what what was I on that television that, program for? That is for? the question we are yeah. asking you. <laughs> no, I'm asking yeah. you. <laughs> Why was I there? <laughs> um, was, did they ask you, like, did they say, can you sew? I mean, can you sew? I no, have, I didn't you watch it? it. I no, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> can anyone, but is it a bit um, like Bake Off where they just go, uh, anyone come and then the joy is watching people who can't can't bake versus people who can. Well, um, I made quite a thing of saying no to, like when Ghost started, all of these requests started coming in about like, would I do this, would I do those shows mm. and pointless and things like that. And I was like, no. <laughs> and it's only because I don't really want to be myself on TV. That's not like, that's never been the goal. Mm. And I don't really want to get distracted from what the goal is. And by, by doing loads of like, reality or mm. appearance type things. Mm. So I'd said no to quite a few things. And then this came up and I was like, well, obviously not. Mm. Oh, maybe. Sewing. <laughs> sewing bee. Are you, are you saying spelling bee? No, sewing bee. Right, right, right. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> No, I said, yes, yeah, I'll do it, yeah. And that was basically how it... <laughs> uh, my agent was like, sorry, are you saying yes? <laughs> yeah, I think I am, yeah. Um, and I think my thought process was just that it's something that I've never done. It's a, I'll learn a skill, uh, you get paid a bit, mm. you might meet some nice people. Mm. And... Um, Two of those things were true. <laughs> <laughs> I did not learn a skill. <laughs> um, I I faked it, and yeah, I think I came third. No, because they don't. Right, so there's three challenges, and they rank one and two in terms of like first to fourth. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the third one, there's just one winner. All right. Mm. So then you don't really get to work out what place you came in. Okay, so better for your self-esteem. Right. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, unless you come fourth twice. You did you? Uh, Can't remember. <laughs> okay. Um, no, I actually didn't. The, on the transformation challenge, which is when you're given a box full of um, materials, and your the the idea is to transform it into something else. When I did that, um, I came second because I thought inside of the box mm. <laughs> by using the box as the main part of the oh. costume. Oh, nice. Oh. Yeah, baby. See what you did <laughs> Because there. I knew that my 
skill would not be sewing. <laughs> like other people were like, oh yeah, I used to sew when I was younger and I've made this and I've made that. Uh, Reverend Kate Botley. Oh, yes. She, master sewer. Mm. Really? Yeah. Wow. And she was one of the contestants. I was like, well, obviously I'm not going to win this challenge. So I need to think of something like creative. So you just decorated the box. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. So in many ways, your improvisation skills yes. helped mm. you. Mm? And that's a lesson to you all. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the hardest things I've ever done. And like the concentration, I don't think I've ever displayed that before. Maybe since my GCSEs. It was fun and I'm glad I did it. But also, why was I on there? Mm. <laughs> Let's not forget that. Mm. What, what was I up to? That's a good question for you guys as well. Which would be the... We went on the spelling bee. Which, <laughs> but which reality show would you... Which one oh. of those would you... If you'd only do one... Kyle's blown his load on the sewing bee. Oh, what? I can't so, do another one. No, that's it. That's Done. it. Drat. Because a lot of them, I always think that you have like the dancing ones and, mm. and the singing ones and you go, well, nah. a lot of the people in it have trained in those things. So it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a cheat, you know. Uh, oh, man. I mean, to, off the top of the head, maybe something like Wipeout or something like that. You guys know? Wipeout. Oh, yeah. Wow. Wait, oh, yeah. Just where you run. run an ultimate course. Yes. And <laughs> although... No one really comes off looking good from that show. So yeah, it might be one of those like, but you still get slapped around a bunch on that show. But if you can take it, then you look great. I think maybe it's one of those things like once the career's over, you're, you're dim, a dimming light fading into ashes. Oh, you won't, you won't win Wipeout when, <laughs> at that age. 75, 75 <laughs> or 76. We did a showstopper uh, set in the world of Total Wipeout. Do you yes, remember that? Yes, we did. Mm. I, I played Richard you Hammond. You played Richard Hammond and I killed you with a big inflatable red ball. <laughs> I don't really know why. R.I.P., man. Yeah. It was, uh, was, and also that was during the, when we just were allowed back on stage after, yes. with the COVIDness. Mm. So we were trying to do Wipeout with two meters between each other three if we were singing uh, only four players it was just it was like a mad game of chess yeah. in terms of uh, what, how we had to manipulate the space oh. but happy memories <laughs> <laughs> something like that or like uh, pointless yeah pointless would be one just want to hit that button I got asked send to do that pointless and I was I don't want to do anything where I might lose Okay, no, hang on. No. Yeah. Because I won't learn a skill doing pointless. True. I'll just like get things wrong. Yeah. And then have like family members be like, how did you not know the answer to that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> family feud, maybe? Take your family yeah, with great. you. Family, yeah, 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 yeah. Family feud type show. I'd yeah. like to be on 90s Gladiators. Oh, right. Because that was a great show. You can't bring a show back just what? because you want to do it. <laughs> hey, producers are constantly doing that. <laughs> no, I'm not having that. It would have to be, the reason it has to be 90s is because now, I feel like now a lot of these shows take themselves like really, really seriously, whereas in the 90s it was a bit more kind of camp. So um, sure. it would, I think it would have been more fun to do it at, at that stage of Gladius, whereas, I, yeah, they did bring it back, didn't they, about 10 years ago. Yeah. And it, was, and it, was, it felt like people were taking it ultra serious. Mm. Whereas really, I just want to do that one with the big cotton bud. Do you remember? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's oh, great. Yeah, yeah. Smack yeah, people great. off a thing. I am going to want another one from you, though. So we'll come back to you. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> well, if, we're, if we're allowed to do that, then I'm going to do Call My Bluff from the 1960s. We're not. Oh. There's not there. <laughs> Frank no Muir way. and Kenneth Williams <laughs> guessing, guessing the funny meaning to a silly word. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not oh. having that either. You, just, you guys are making me think of a bunch, like catchphrase. That's a great one. Too. Oh, that's a great I show. Did catchphrase. Did you, did you do catchphrase. You did celebrity catchphrase yeah. with uh, Stephen Mohan? Yeah. Oh How my was that? Gosh, such smashed a great, it. such yeah? a fun show. I absolutely smashed it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's one of the best celebrity shows. Yeah. Because there's so many shows that you go, why have you put celebrities? I don't understand. That, I saw one with Tim Vine and Mel uh, Giedrich. Oh God, I said a great name wrong, haven't Gedrich. I? Giedrich. Thank you. If she's been on the show and we've learned to say her name. I obviously didn't. Uh, and a lady from the Pussycat Dolls. And it was the most Kimberly. amazing combination of three... <laughs> It's got to be Kimberly. Kimberly's in everything. Is she the blonde one? Yep. Yeah, that was Kimberly. She loves it. <laughs> <laughs> loves ITV too. I don't think I've seen that one. And I've seen, I, I watched a lot of them They're in so the run funny. up to. Oh, you were prepping? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were getting ready? Yeah. I've always been quite good at it. There's nothing else on TV that I would say that I'm good at in terms of like, I'm really good at. Okay, right. And catchphrase, I was like, 
I could, I could smash this. I could win this one. I could win this. <laughs> this is, this is my, this is my race. I could win fifty thousand pounds <laughs> for charity. What did you, what did you come away with for for charity? Thirty. Wow, that's pretty amazing. That's really good. Wow. With charity, Futures Theatre. Mm. Okay. Which is, um, which is a theatre company that is based in Lambeth, and they um, focus on stories by women, and they do outreach work with women in and around Lambeth just who have stories to tell and some and also do work with sex workers and people who have been uh, seeking asylum and Mm. and also people that have problems with like housing and stuff Mm. like that they also do work in schools with um all sorts of subject teenage pregnancy anti-bullying knife crime conflict resolution they also do training work for social workers I've done a lot of workshops with them where you role play a scenario that a social worker might find themselves in mm. which is really difficult mm-hmm. and they role play how to solve those the problems in those scenarios mm. so i've worked with them for years they actually gave me my first job out of drama school yeah okay yeah um, and then 10 years later i was able to give something back that's amazing very cool. yeah yeah i remember early out of drama school that that sort of uh, role play thing mm-hmm. was that big foray into continuing that improv uh-huh. but using it in that practical sense of like training people for dealing with natural disasters yeah. uh police incidents and mm-hmm. stuff like that and it was a uh, one of my early early jobs as yeah, well yeah. doing that um yeah. Those were interesting. Saw some crazy levels of different improv acting. People yeah. who just went deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw a guy uh. sprint across a lawn and then get sniped. He thought he was sniped in the head. So I see him watching him sprinting and then he just hits the deck and goes limp in the middle of the yard. And then the people from um, the Red Cross have to come in and, and deal with that situation. Right. It was it was interesting. Wow. Some people went deep into their where did you? Where was this? Wait, God. was this out, out of drama school? This was out of drama school. Oh, I thought you were going to say in jobs because no. I know we did at East 15 we did like a, a project they called. they coupled with it so we just finished but they right. had gone into our school at oh, Arts right. Ed over here right, yeah, yeah. yeah I think it was Arts Ed and East 15 was a, like oh, a combination okay. group right, of the right. two yeah, yeah. Is that how you got into it as well yeah I got, I got snapped in the head too man <laughs> no, um, I yeah I went to East 15 and then we did a it was called living history project okay and you live out at a time in history where there was conflict Mm. And um, yeah, I mean, it's mad. It can be good. It depends on what what scenario you're given mm. and how if it actually affects uh, anyone in your year. And I, I think ours was probably a bit too close for, for some of the students. Mm. Um, but for others, it was just sort of like a it's like make believe thing. So it was yeah, it's, it's a weird one, but it, I I see the importance of it. Um, but that was like six and a half hours a day of straight improvising wow. yeah um and then you do that across two weeks mm. and it's mad because i mean obviously i've never done anything like that since but you um you dream about it yeah and it just becomes your and you you change as a person because of the character you're playing i was playing a 60 year old man he started off at 60 at the beginning of the project mm. and i think it was like early 70s by the end of it because at the end of the day they'll debrief you and say okay next uh, tomorrow will be a year on wow oh wow or at next the next week or, yeah yeah it's it's interesting and in, like in stretching yourself yeah, yeah. That you really can go you probably like you said you haven't done that since mm. but knowing that you can go that deep into the bag yeah, and yeah. Go that serious it was also the first time i'd ever cried acting uh. um because i'd only ever cried at like things that had emotionally affected me mm-hmm. as Kyle. Um, and I'd always said that I was never able to cry on cue. Mm. And um, and yeah, and it happened. Cause my daughter ran off with one of the soldiers and, and I just felt it like, because I, I, we'd been living it, mm. it felt real. But that didn't help me uh, in Whitechapel because uh, I couldn't cry then and they had to put menthol in my eyes. Wow. You guys, have you guys used the, the stick before? Yeah. I've used the yeah. stick. Yeah. But like, when they blow in your eye, you start crying like almost immediately. And I had to start like in the middle of the scene. Oh. Mm. So what we did instead was put Vicks on my nails. And then there was a part, I think, where I was just like that. And like putting my, my nails, my fingers near my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> into my eye, digging it into my, wiping it across my eyelids. Um, and yeah. For the craft. Yeah, because I couldn't cry and cue. Mm. But I could then when my daughter ran away. 
you're obviously known mostly now at the moment for doing Hang on a minute. comedy. I want to know what show you're going to do. What? I want to know what show you're going to be on. Oh yeah. Because I'm not accepting that yet. Master Chef. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I would be really good at Master yeah. Chef. But, but I, I might be too good, you know, actually, what you want... As, well, no, cause she I, said modestly. <laughs> <laughs> modesty don't get you anywhere. Because uh, I remember there was a guy from EastEnders on MasterChef and he knew too much about food too early on. So you'd have to right. do the pretending that you didn't really know anything about food. Mm, so you'd have to sure, play sure, the, sto- sure. the story of... You're pretty good at pretending. Oh, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm very good at pretending. Um, so that's the answer to that question. Right. So, because you're known for mostly comedy now, but... It, is that it feels like there may maybe a bit of you that is also like, and also I'd like to play Henry V. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Who is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> what did he do? Um, no, I'd, I'd love to do actually a period drama. Mm. I'd really love to do that. Yes. Get me on a horse, I say. I call my agent every day. I say, get me on a horse. Can you ride? <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. This is the British Library. <laughs> um, no, I, uh, can I? I don't think so. I think like I, I went to Cuba 2019 and like rode a horse on the beach okay. as part of like an Airbnb experience mm-hmm. but not like not like Joshua C. Jackson can ride a horse is that what you mean? Can Joshua C. Jackson ride a horse? Yeah, Joshua C. Jackson used to be a cowboy. That's right. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, used to uh, used to rope ride all those bad things and That's amazing. Uh, rope ride shoot all that in California. Oh wow! Yeah, it was good. It was good. A good when was year. the last time you were up on horseback? The last time I was. So it's been a while. So the last time I was on a horse was probably about two years ago. Right. Yeah, two years ago. And is it like riding a bike? Do you just get back? Like you just get back to it? It is a little bit like riding a bike. Once you once you've like done it. So but you, yeah, yeah. It, it's you get sore in places that you forgot right, existed. Right, right. Did you start but, when you were young? So I always had like an affinity for it because my dad was uh, a massive fan of uh, the Buffalo Soldiers right. and then Black Cowboys in California. There's a there's a big Bill Pickett rodeo that happens right outside Castro Valley. There's a, right. so we used to go to that every year. Dad used to walk around in cowboy boots, all that. So that was a big part of me growing up, seeing uh-huh. him and his influence with that. And then I went to a high school that actually every freshman had a horse so it was like a cowboy what? school what give it one yeah so you had to look after it get up in the morning for how long so for an entire year you had to and then you had the option to do it for the other four or three years yeah or play a sport but uh at the end of the year they split us into teams and then we did like rodeo horse racing so we did uh poles barrels keyhole all that kind of like roping riding cutting right. all that kind yeah. of cowboy stuff rescue horse race you pick somebody up off the ground um at a lope all that. So yeah, we wow. got got pretty good in that year. It was cool. And then you did sports after. And then so my yeah, my last three years I did sports right, instead. Right. Yeah. So uh, but we still did horse camping trips. So you'd go up for like ten days out with right. pack horses, your horses, and just be wow doing the real cowboy stuff. It was cool. Is that your show real? Uh, there's no because it happened in high school. Really. Right, right, right. Um, but I do have some clips of me going back and of riding, oh, right, yeah, but yeah, not like the full rodeo sure, sure, experience. Sure. Yeah. Oh man, there's a clip on there. So if you got thrown into a rodeo like tomorrow, you'd be all right. Give me two days. Okay. Give me two days. <laughs> Give me two. <laughs> Sorry, but it's tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was going to segue the conversation onto music. Okay, great. I want to know what show you're going to be on. I already said call my bluff. You oh, We're not having oh, that. Yeah. Why not? That's, that's in black and white. I'm calling your bluff. That's not the real one. <laughs> all right. Uh, what about um, Would I Lie to You, which is basically... Basically, it's, all right, Would I Lie to You. Sure. <laughs> Great. No one's enthusiastic about it, but fine. <laughs> it ticks the box. <laughs> you have said, Kyle, if you weren't an actor, you might have become a grime MC. Yeah. I was doing both at one stage and then realized that um, being a grime MC didn't make any money. <laughs> I mean, neither did acting, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, I, I, I guess I felt like I had to concentrate on one and it was going yeah. to be acting. Mm. Um and then I was able to continue the other one uh, because I we created a show uh, called String V Spitter that I did at uh, Soho Theatre with mm. Ed Smith, Ed MacArthur, and um, he and I made music, made songs, and put them in the show. So I found that I was able to sort of do both. I think it's magical when something that you've kind of left behind you can suddenly bring it back in, you know, something that yeah, you've, yeah. you've kind of almost said goodbye to it and then you go, oh, and now 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Here was the opportunity to bring it back. That's really yeah. exciting. I guess I kind of still do. Um, we were in the studio yesterday. Um, we're working on the television version. It's in development. Ah, cool. Mm. Okay, cool. So we went to the studio and recorded two new songs to add to the treatment whilst we're sending it out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it allows me to still do that. It's kind of the dream. It's almost like... A so the Jamie Foxx method? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get you yeah, exactly, yeah. I was also hoping that, like, in my time off, I'd be able to, like, do some music for myself. Mm. Mm. Um, but I'm never allowed a day off ever again. I'm sorry for that. Oh, that's all right. Is that Pippa's I'll, I'll fault? Get, I'll get an evening. Kyle, would you like to make up a song with us? I'd love that. Good. Let's do that, then. Yo, all alone in the green room. Oh, you been alone? Me too. And now they can't see you. I can't see them. They're my mean friends. Where they gone? Where they left me? And the whole room is empty. And I've asked for a Pepsi. They gave me Coke. Oh, this is some joke. Where are all my mates now? I've been in here for days now It's getting kinda late now I should just say how I'm feeling All alone In this room And the tone Is the gloomy And I'm feeling kinda roomy What sue me? Where are my mates? Where are my mates? Where are my mates? Where are my mates? Is this my fate? Is this my fate? I'm a late Pulling my weight Tonight I've got a date I haven't spoken to anybody Cause they all left the room And they left me gloomy It feels like doom Should I take these shrooms? No, you got a date later no, you got a save later. We could go to a rave later. And then you can. You can find some mates. Where are my mates? You won't feel hated. Where are my mates? And then you won't feel slated. Where are my mates? They missed a birthday, but happy belated. The green room feels pretty dark when you're all on your own All on my own Sat there by yourself, don't wanna call no one on the phone On my phone If they would just be there, there by your side Where are my friends? You'd have a smile that you could not hide But you are never alone? end I can't find them I'm just learning Where my lines are my and friends? I'll start whining Because I can't Where find are them Are they hiding? Are they Where beside are me? Oh look, there's Lionel uh, Hello, Kyle, man. I've got your Pepsi Oh, oh, uh, thanks You're thanks. on set in five Five? You sure? Yeah It's, it's just because someone said that earlier And, and they, have, they didn't come back So it's, um, it's definitely five? Oh yeah, I'll definitely be back. Cool, man. <laughs> ah, that was great. That was yeah. a thing. Yeah, man. <laughs> Thanks so much, Kyle. Thank you. That was really a, a joyful chat. Yeah. And a wonderful sing song. Yeah, I loved it. Do you have anything you would like the listeners of this podcast to watch? I did a pilot for Channel Four uh, <gasps> called Red Flag. <gasps> And that is available on all four as a blap that came out on the 6th of May. Wow. So uh, you can watch that on, on all four on Channel 4's YouTube. And just watch Bob Ber- Bob's Burgers because I think it's really good. <laughs> <laughs>
Mm. Seconded. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Joshua, do you have anything coming up that you're doing that's really interesting, exciting? I'll be uh, going on tour coming up for uh, with Girl from the North Country, and we're uh, opening up in Dublin. So uh, catch the, the tour schedule online for Girl from the North Country, and it's going to be a really exciting year on the road, so I'm looking forward to it. Amazing. We're going to miss you in Showstopper shows, Joshua. I know. I'll miss you guys, too. But we'll send fan mail to Joshua. Jackson. <laughs> yeah. okay, yeah. We send me fan mail that is so meant for me. You're in, yeah. We're gonna make sure that you have something. Either that or send it to the other Joshua Jackson. Yeah. Pippa never asked me if I've got anything I want to plug. Andrew, do you have anything you want to plug? No. <laughs> Pippa, do you yes. have anything that you'd like to plug? No, I don't have anything I would like to plug apart from my book that you should still buy that I keep plugging. <laughs> <laughs> God, improv your life, an improviser's guide to embracing whatever life throws at you, such as forgetting your own title of your own book. <laughs> you styled it. You styled it out. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Kyle. Thank you. Do you know what? It's really made me think about which celebrity programme I want to be on. Yeah. Uh, and now, I'd like to say, with a bit of hindsight, it's Wim Hof's um, Ice Challenge. Wim Hof's Ice Challenge. Yeah. Have you literally made that up on the spot. <laughs> what is w- Wim Hof's Ice Challenge? Is this, is this show on the BBC iPlayer? No, it's not. When you get home, you look it up. All right. And Wim Hof is the, this ice breathing. <laughs> ice breathing? What? <laughs> the latter stages of pregnancy have affected <laughs> Pippa's memory recall. He is a, a breathing specialist who in, he specialises in putting people in ice baths and they've taken eight celebrities, including musical theatre star Alfie Bo. Right. Uh, and then uh, they and they have to just submerge themselves in ice a lot. My my license fee paying for this. <laughs> yes, I know, but I promise <laughs> if you watch it, you're right. When I first saw it, I thought that's neither going to be a good programme. Right. Oh, it's wonderful. Wow, there we go. So I'm going to text Kyle now and just make sure he knows that I've updated my choice. Because he's going to make us stick to that. Yeah, yeah, it's true. He's going to hold <laughs> us to account. It was wonderful to chat to him. I hope you enjoyed it, listeners. Did you? <laughs> Did you? Why don't you let us know? <laughs> yeah, you could send us a message on Twitter. At The Showstoppers. <laughs> or Facebook. Slash The Showstoppers. Yeah, or uh, TikTok. Oh, uh, it'll be at Showstopper Musical. Yeah, I'm not sure you can send a message on TikTok, but follow us on TikTok anyway. Yeah, follow us on TikTok. Eventually, we'll figure out how it works and we'll get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's a good point. We should tell people they must go and go on TikTok and do duets with us and things. Yeah, absolutely. we got uh, some content on TikTok that you won't find on our other social media things, including, absolutely as you say, uh, some duets. So we've sung like half of an improvised duet and then you can do a, the duet duet function on TikTok where you record yourself singing the other half of the duet and you can improvise with us and uh, yeah it's really fun a few people have done it and it is awesome that's a really nice thing to do do you know another nice thing to do is give your favourite podcast a five star rating that is a very nice thing to do particularly if it's us yes so click on those buttons hit like and subscribe (laughs) that's a thing Um, and I suppose that's it really isn't it alright well bye then bye